Hello everybody. I got another painting I want to reveal to everyone. Man, I love this one so much. I like all of them. It's like every one is the best one. But I'm fixing to show it to you and I first want to open up in prayer and because everything that I paint is God inspired. It's something that the Lord put on my heart. And I want to pray and I just first want to open up and I want to share my heart and just show it to you, all right? So if you would, just please close your eyes right now. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, I lift up anybody watching right now, Father. I pray, Father God, that these paintings, Lord, that you told me to paint, Father God, that these paintings that you inspired me to paint, Father God, would impact and touch lives, Father God, like, like they would never imagine, Lord. I pray, Father God, that these paintings would give inspiration and hope, Father God, and would uh, speak of the gospel, Father, of your son, Lord. I pray, Lord, that these paintings will have an impact on people, Father, that would transform their lives, that would want, that would make them want to know Jesus Christ, that would make them want to have a relationship with you, Father. Father, I lift up everybody watching, Lord, and I just speak, Father God, a word of encouragement and hope over everyone. I ask you, Lord, to have your way. Bless all these viewers, Father God. Let them find hope in you, Lord. An assurance, Father God, in your good plan of salvation through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, Lord. Let these paintings glorify you, Father, and let your name be known above all else, Father. I give you the praises and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, check it out. So I named this painting, I call it, uh, Still He Rescued Me. Because in the scripture, it's inspired by Psalms 107. And I'll read it to you real quick, but... It inspired me to paint this because there's a scripture that, that when I read, it just really does something in my heart. It's a scripture that talks about even in our own distresses, even in our own iniquities. It says, still he rescued me. And I dug the grave for myself and I made a mess of things myself. It says, even in the mess ups that I done myself, still he reached down and rescued me. And so then I want to show you this painting and I hope that you're blessed, man. I hope, I hope it touches your heart as much as it has mine. I hope that you find inspiration through this. But really, ultimately, I hope that you find a relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you have one already, I pray that this inspires you, man, to be bold for the Lord. Tell of the world, tell the world of the good things that God has done in your life. Amen. If you would, check it out. And still he rescued me. Amen. In the depths of our distresses, in the mess ups and the screw ups of our lives, over and over again, we find ourselves calling out to the Lord and saying, God, please, I know you've done it before. Would you please do it again? And it says that still he reaches down and he rescues us over and over again. So that's why I did this. The Lord reaching down, pulling us up once again and he delights and he is pleased by helping you up over and over again that's what he's there for he loves you he knows that you can't get it right he knows that I can't get it right he knows that that uh, that we do wrong and we mess up but this was the whole point of the cross of him dying for our sins this was the reason that his hands were pierced for our transgressions for our messes because he knew that we were going to need him Amen. We need the Lord and it's okay to need him. He wants us to be needy for him. Amen. So let me read to you Psalms 107. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Man, the Lord is good for his mercy endures forever. Verse two, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Are you the redeemed of the Lord? It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way. Have you ever wandered in a wilderness with no hope? With not knowing where you were or what you're doing or what your purpose is. I've been there before. It says they found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty. They're so fainted in them. Then they cried out to the Lord. It says then you cried out to the Lord. Amen. It's always now you want to cry out to the Lord. And he's okay with it. There was a time where then I cried out to the Lord. And he heard me, man. He heard me. 
It says, and he delivered them out of their distress. He delivered you out of your distress. It says, and he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city for a dwelling place. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for the Lord in, in his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul. Only God can satisfy your soul. Amen. Nothing else. Everything else is generic and fake. Man, I don't care what the world tells you. We've been there. I've done that. I tell you what. Everything is fake and generic compared to knowing him. It says, and he fills a hungry soul with goodness. Those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound in affliction and irons, because they rebelled against God and God's word. I rebelled against God and I rebelled against his word. It says, and despise, they also despise the counsel of the Most High. Did you ever despise when a man or woman of God or somebody in your family, maybe your pastor, somebody is trying to guide you and tell you about the Lord and you're like, man, I don't want to hear it. Well, that was me. And and it talks about every single one of us in here. Okay, those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound in affliction and irons because they rebelled against the words of God. It says, and and despise the counsel of the Most High. We despise the counsel. We don't want to be counseled. We don't want nobody to encourage us or tell us anything. We thought we had it figured out. It says, therefore, he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Have you ever been in a place where nobody's there to help you anymore? You done burnt every bridge you had. Everybody who's trying to help you. You you turned away from them. You did them wrong. Now you have nobody in your life to help you. And you find yourself in a place where you fall down and there's nobody to help. It says, then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. Then, again, we cried out to the Lord in our trouble. It says, and he saved them out of their distress. Again, man, over and over and over again, we mess up, we screw up, we we fall short. And it says, we reach to him and still he rescues us over and over again. Man, it says in verse 14, it says, He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death. And he broke their chains in pieces. Amen. Did he break your chains? He broke mine. He broke my chains in my life, those strongholds. It says, Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. And tell people what God has done in your life. Don't be afraid or don't be ashamed. Check it out. When you were in the world, you would tell of all the bad things that were going on in your life. And, and now... When you have the Lord in your life, it says, don't hold back. Tell people, tell the world, tell them how good he is. Tell them what he's done. Tell them what he's done in your life and don't hold back. The Lord was there when nobody else was there. I don't care the closest person to you that loves you the most. is still not as close as God has been to you. Even they can't be in those, in, in every dark moment that you're in. Even they can't be in every place where you feel scared, alone, and you don't know what to do. Man, but God has been there the whole time. It says he never leaves you. Verse 16, it says he broke, he has broken the gates of bronze and he has cut the bars of iron in two. Amen. Verse 17, fools because of their transgression. I was a fool because of my transgression and because of my iniquities were afflicted because of your transgressions and your iniquities you were afflicted in other words because of your own bad decisions you dealt the consequences and so did I their soul had heard all manner of food and they drew near to the gates of death we were to the place of death I mean there was nothing good in us we were headed for destruction in other words verse 19 it says they cried out to the Lord then They cried out to the Lord. Who? Me and you. We cried out to the Lord. Man, I've been there. We cried out to the Lord over and over again. It says, then again, they cried out to the Lord in trouble. And he saved them in their distresses. Man, do you see a pattern here? The Lord knows you're going to mess up. The Lord knew I was going to mess up. It says, and he still rescues us over and over again. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distress. Verse 20, he sent. Who sent? God sent. His word. Who's the word? Jesus Christ. He sent his word and he healed them. And he delivered them from their destructions. Thank you, Lord. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. Oh, he's asking this for us to give thanks to him for his goodness. And don't hold back, man. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Let people taste and see that he's good. 
And man, our lives aren't perfect. I know that mine's not either. I don't praise him because everything's perfect in my life. I praise him because he's God. Because he's God. Amen. It don't matter through the thick and thin, through the good times and the bad times. He is God. And you know what? Somebody said it today. Just him dying on the cross for my sins and taking my place on that Christ is enough for me. Everything else good that happens is a byproduct of being a child of God. Amen. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. And for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And declare his words with rejoicing. Amen. I wanted to share that with you because that's what inspired me to, to paint this. I'm going to tell you something. It don't matter where you're at in your life. It don't matter what you're going through, what you've been through. It don't matter what it looks like, how bad your situation looks. And nothing's impossible with God. I'm not trying to convince you that you need to serve God. My heart and my prayer is that you be inspired in some way, somehow, that you get that you get encouraged and that you realize, man, that this life was not created for us to live it alone. There's a hole inside of your heart that only God can fill. I can't fill it. Nobody else can fill it for you. Only God can fill it for you. Amen. And he wants to fill that hole in your heart. I pray that you let him into your heart. And in John 3.16, man, the famous, famous scripture. It's just so important and so awesome. And it pretty much ties it all in. in John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Have you let the Son of God into your heart? Have you let Jesus Christ into your heart? And I tell you because I love you, man and woman of God. He loves you so much. He wants to turn you into a man and woman of God. If you would, close your eyes. I just want to close in prayer. And I just pray that you receive, that you receive something from today. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray, Father God, that whoever is watching, Lord, that they find hope in you, Father. Holy Spirit, you tug at their heart and you show them how bad they need you, Father God. I have a relationship with you, a personal one, Lord. But my heart, my prayers that everybody gets to know you, Father God. Some will mock and some will laugh and that's okay, Father. I'm prepared for that and that's okay with me. I rejoice and I praise you through it all, Father. But for him, Father God, or her, Lord, that, that needs you so bad in their life, Father, they feel that tugging. Your word says, now is a day of salvation. Today is a day of salvation. Let them not hold back, Father. I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus that you be encouraged, that the Lord will see you through, and God will always see you through no matter what. All he wants you to do is point back to him and say, thank you, Lord. You did it again for me. Amen. God bless you.